dear Lord is, there's liberty. Amen. And, uh, you know, to think about the, the service now, I think about uh, uh, this time of year, I, I, you know, a lot of times we want to skip this time of year and go straight to Christmas. Uh, but I th I'm thankful for this time of year. Uh, you know, you think about uh, the, what's taking place. You think about uh, our country and everything. You think about uh, how it was established. You think about uh, not only that, but you think about most of all when they come over, uh, they establish it upon God's precious word, uh, the foundation of God. You know, and, and that's what we heard today uh, is because we uh, we have listened and we have heard the word of God preached. And something God has done a work in our heart and made us new creatures in Christ, and I'm thankful for that. Amen. I, I want to read the text out of Luke chapter 17. If you would stand for the reading of God's precious word, in reference to His word and not to me. Luke chapter 17, and I will use this as a springboard into the message. There's a couple other places that I want to look at, but I want to look at this. Uh, as a reading of our text and everything, now think about uh, the things that are taking place in Luke 17, Luke 18, and also in Luke 19, uh, some things that took place and three different individuals how the Lord uh, had made an impact on their lives. And, uh, in Luke chapter 17, verse 11, said, It came to pass as he went to, to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, and he entered into a certain village. There, there met him ten men uh, that were lepers, uh, which stood afar off. And as uh, they lifted up their voices and said, uh, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he uh, saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves to the, uh, to the priest. And it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, uh, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face uh, at, at his feet and given thanks uh, uh, that he uh, given thanks that he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Where are uh, were they not ten cleansed? Uh, but where are the nine? Uh, and there uh, are not found that return to uh, give uh, glory to God to save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, Father, for your goodness, Lord. I just pray, Father, for a little while you'll touch our voice, Father, and you'll touch us in a physical way, God. Touch us in a spiritual way, God. Uh, hide me behind the cross, God, that I may preach your precious word, Father. Uh, help me, Lord, not to get in your way, but God, your spirit, I pray. Uh, your Holy Spirit would speak through these lips of clay, God, that you created. To, and God, Lord, it would be glory to you, Father, because you're worthy, Lord. And, and I pray for somebody lost, somebody backslidden, God, somebody in need this morning. I pray, Father, they'll not leave the church the way they came in, but God, they'll find uh, what they need this morning. I love you, Father, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to preach a little thought on uh, so much to thank him for. And, and I got to thinking about my life. And I got to thinking about uh, the situation that, that, that I've dealt with in my life. And, and I've said it before, Alan Fredo was probably the most influential uh, person to my salvation of anybody. Uh, me and him worked together. We hunted together. We hung around. Uh, and he put up with my mouth. He put up sure. with uh, the things that uh, I shouldn't say. Uh, 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 and I think about that. Uh, and I say, Alan, I'm sorry. And he said, uh, uh, don't apologize to me. Apologize to the Lord. Uh, I wish he would have slapped me. Uh, I would have felt a lot better. Uh, but, you know, I think about that. He just loved me. Uh, and I think about uh, whenever I finally gave my heart to the Lord, uh, I tell you that night uh, when I got saved, he was the first one uh, uh, that I called. Uh, uh, he said, I know you got saved six days. He's going, I said, no, you don't understand. I got saved just now. And I cried and he cried. And, and we sobbed for a little while. But I'm thankful for salvation in my life. I'm thankful for, for a country that we live in. I'm thankful for our military. I'm thankful for our church. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for all the goodness that God has given me. I tell you this, I don't deserve anything. I tell you, if I got what I deserve, I'd be in hell today. And I'm glad for mercy. I'm glad that God gives me His goodness. And so I'm thankful for Him so much. And I think about this one leper that came back. He said, where are the nine? In other words, what Jesus was saying is, I did not heal ten of you. He said, go show yourself to the priest. And when he looked down and he saw his hands, and he saw that the white spots were gone, and he saw where the skin was broke open, and he saw that all that was healed, just like a normal hand. 
and when he got to looking at his arms, uh, uh, he realized uh, uh, that the Lord had already touched him. Uh, and you know, and he turned around. Uh, he did a 180. Uh, he didn't keep going towards the priest. I uh, bet he turned around uh, and he said, uh, uh, glorified God with a, uh, with a loud voice because he knew uh, uh, that it wasn't a priest that healed him. Uh, uh, he knew uh, uh, that it wasn't uh, uh, some uh, accident that healed him. Uh, uh, he knew the one that sent him uh, uh, to the priest uh, uh, was the one that healed him. Uh, 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 all the times uh, uh, we lose back to uh, uh, the matter uh, that all good things uh, uh, come from God. Uh, uh, a lot of times uh, uh, we think that it's supposed to be that way, but I'll say this, uh, uh, God's got his hand in all of it. Uh, uh, God's got, uh, got his work uh, and everything that's going on. Uh, he say, what are you talking about? The uh, Bible says, God, the Lord is in every place. I uh, uh, behold the evil and the good. Uh, uh, God, uh, uh, God knows what he's doing. Uh, I tell you, uh, for God so loved the world. Uh, uh, let me think about what that says. Uh, it says, uh, uh, for God, he didn't just love the world. Uh, uh, he so loved the world. Uh, uh, you know what, what that means? Uh, that means he loves us. Uh, that means uh, his goodness is towards us. Uh, I'm glad. Uh, I tell you, I've got a lot to thank the Lord for this morning. Uh, and I'm thinking about that one leopard uh, uh, that turned around. Uh, I tell you, he got to looking at it. Uh, you know, and when he turned around, he didn't realize uh, uh, that he was going to get a second place. And uh, he said, thy faith that made thee whole. Uh, I tell you, not only did he get a physical uh, uh, touch, uh, he got a spiritual touch. Uh, he uh, said, what are you calling? I tell you, he, uh, he, uh, he got a double portion that day. Uh, I tell you, God not only touched him in a physical way, uh, uh, but he saved his soul uh, uh, because he realized uh, uh, who it was uh, that touched him. Uh, he glorified the right one. Uh, I tell you, sometimes uh, uh, well, there's churches in the land uh, that they go to church, uh, they worry about what people say about them, uh, they worry about what people, uh, how people look at them, uh, what they're wearing, uh, or how they dress. I'll say this, uh, I come to God's house, uh, uh, for one reason, uh, and that's to worship him. Uh, that's a good thing for us. I tell you, because he's worthy of it. Uh, I tell you, sometimes uh, uh, we worry about little things uh, that mean nothing. Uh, but I'll say this, you know what means the most of my life? Uh, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I tell you, I love him above my family. Uh, I love him uh, above my church. Uh, I love him above everything uh, because he's been good to this old boy. Amen. I got so much to thank him for. I tell you, you think about it, I shall never forget the day uh, when the Lord saved me. Uh, I tell you that, uh, January the 22nd, uh, uh, 1991, uh, uh, you think about what, it was a 9 o'clock at night on a Tuesday night. Uh, I tell you, the sky was clear, and it seemed like every star in the sky, I could see every one of them. Uh, and you know why? Uh, because God... I walked away from the vision that I had uh, and gave me a different vision. Uh, I tell you, God gave me a different perspective. Uh, they gave me a different look. Uh, I tell you, I want the same person. Uh, I went down behind my old building uh, and I was just dirty uh, spiritually, but I got up renewed. Uh, I got up a new preacher in Christ. Uh, I tell you, I didn't have to go down to the river and wash it away. Uh, even though I got baptized, uh, uh, the Bible says uh, for the blood of Jesus Christ uh, 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 cleanses us from all sin. Uh, I tell you, I got saved that night. You know what? I ain't got over there. That was a long time ago. <laughs> that's been almost 30 years. Hey Amen. That's been a long time. But I'll say this. It's been the best part of my life. Yeah. I tell you, I remember that little old preacher who used to come to the house. He tell my daddy, I love you. The Lord loves you. And I think to myself, as I was listening to him, uh, uh, he didn't even know I was anywhere around. I, I said, how does he love my daddy? Uh, and he don't even know him. Uh, I tell you, you know what it was? Uh, uh, there's a different thing going on. Uh, I tell you, uh, Christians, uh, uh, they look at things differently. Uh, uh, they look at things in a different way. I'm glad that God put a different vision in my eyes. Uh, I'm glad that uh, you think about our lives. I'm glad there's a, a different perspective. Uh, you know what? Uh, God can help uh, uh, when nothing else can. Amen. When all else fails, God can help. Amen. You know what? You know what the, the, the thing about a leper was? They had a, like a, a flesh-eating bacteria. That's what it was. Sure. And uh, what it was, it was contagious, and they couldn't be around people. And when they got it, uh, they had to be uh, uh, segregated. They had to be in a place uh, uh, that where nobody else was. Uh, uh, they couldn't uh, uh, use the same water. Uh, uh, they couldn't use uh, uh, the same facilities. Uh, uh, they couldn't be in the same house as everybody else. Uh, uh, they were separated. Uh, uh, can you imagine what was taking place? Uh, uh, can you imagine uh, how that, uh, and no doubt they saw their children out there and they couldn't give them a hug. Uh, no doubt they saw their wife out there 
and they couldn't uh, and look at them and say, I love you, uh, because they wasn't nowhere around them. Uh, they couldn't be near them. Uh, and they had to tear their clothes uh, and, and they had to holler, unclean, unclean, unclean. Uh, and what that was, uh, uh, that was letting everybody else know, uh, uh, don't get near me uh, uh, because I'm contagious. Uh, and you think about uh, how isolated they were, uh, but when they saw the Lord uh, that was coming by, uh, they started uh, uh, praising and said, uh, Master, uh, you know, he said, uh, he said, go to the priest, uh, uh, but this one came back. You know what? Uh, you know what happened? Uh, I tell you, he wasn't afraid to be around nobody no more. Uh, I tell you, he wasn't afraid uh, uh, to come and in contact with nobody no more uh, because God had took care of that. Uh, uh, God likes to help uh, uh, when nothing else will. Uh, I tell you, they know what? Nobody could heal that. Uh, it was a thing that uh, took place, uh, and after a while, uh, uh, it either took their joints off uh, or they took their toes off or uh, uh, whatever it did, uh, or they got some kind of uh, uh, a miracle happened. Uh, I tell you, a miracle took place that day. Uh, uh, that's when the Lord uh, uh, come by and touched him. Uh, I say this, God likes to help uh, uh, when nothing else will. Uh, I tried everything in this world. Uh, I tell you, I, I searched for happiness in this world. Uh, I tried things uh, that satisfy my flesh, uh, but there wasn't nothing that could satisfy me. Uh, I sure it make me happy for a little while, uh, but there was something going on in my soul. Uh, I tell you, I remember my little girl, she was about four months old. Uh, I'd come home and I'd pick her up uh, and I'd think, uh, uh, what's wrong with me? Uh, because uh, my wife, I'm not even happy at home. Uh, I ain't happy at work. Uh, I ain't happy when I come home. I got a little four-month-old baby and now she's 29 years old. I think, I'm thinking to myself, uh, uh, what's going on? Why ain't I happy? Uh, because there was something empty in my life. Uh, I've tried everything else uh, and there was nothing to satisfy me. Uh, but I'm glad for the night uh, when God come into my heart. Uh, I think he likes to work. Uh, I went nothing else will. I looked at my little girl. I tell you, I never seen more a uh, beautiful baby in my life. I, I can see her in a different way. I, I tell you, I hugged my wife and, and I said, I love you. Because you know what? God makes a difference. Amen. He likes to work. But nothing else will. This world is unhappy. This world is trying to find satisfaction in drugs. They're trying to find satisfaction in alcohol. They're trying to find it in everything else in this world. And they can't find it. You know why? Because there's a void that's always going to be empty there. It ain't never going to be filled. There ain't nothing in this world going to fill it. Uh, and there ain't nobody going to take the place. Uh, uh, because that place is there for one person. Uh, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. You know what? I you realize how good it is to serve the Lord. Yes. I tell you, if the Lord uh, uh, calls me home today, that's all right. I, I told my wife, I said, don't cry at my funeral. Uh, you just rejoice uh, uh, because I made it home. Uh, I tell you, uh, you think about that. Uh, they, uh, I think about my life. Uh, this, this life is a, a dressing room. Uh, this life is just a place uh, that we, we can get ready to walk out on the big stage. Uh, I'm looking forward one day to, uh, to walk out on the big stage uh, of glory. Uh, I tell you, uh, I walk down the, uh, the golden streets uh, and I kneel at his feet and say, Lord, I just want to thank you for saving my son. I'm glad that void was filled in my life. I'm glad I'm saved today. Yeah. You know what? What's greater than being saved? There ain't nothing no greater. You know why? Before I got saved, I was afraid of dying and going to hell. I was afraid to close my eyes. I was afraid that, you know, this could be the night. Uh, for a long time, I don't know why, but for a long time, I used to think 35 years old, and that's going to be my life. That's going to be the end of my life. And when I turned, when, uh, when January the 14th, that's my natural birth, when, uh, when it turned, I turned 36, uh, I tell you, I was thankful uh, because it wasn't 35. Uh, I lived to be 36. Now, I'm almost 55. Uh, I'll be 55 in January, Lord willing. Uh, uh, what you think about uh, our life? Uh, uh, God, I look at that. That's why I look at it. Uh, if I lived in January, God's gave me 20 years of extra blessings uh, uh, because uh, I used to think 35. I don't know where that number come from. Nobody ever told me that. Uh, I just something to come in my mind and I thought about it uh, until I turned 36 years old. That's a long time to think about it. Then. I guess I read somewhere where the uh, 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 average life of man is 70 years old. And I thought, well, I ain't going to live a half of that. But I'm thankful for the blessings. You know, I'm thankful that God likes to work uh, with nothing else. Well, you know, it don't matter who it is. If you think about this man was a Samaritan. You say, what's that got to do with it? Samaritans and the Jews had no dealings with one another. They, they were separate because the Jew, Samaritans uh, uh, were uh, from the tribe of Ephraim. 
uh, uh, they were from the old school, uh, uh, and whenever uh, they, they identified with them, uh, and they weren't identified with the tribe of Judah or, or uh, uh, the, the tribe of Benjamin or any of them, uh, uh, they would separate themselves and say, I'm not part of them uh, because I'm part of Ephraim. Uh, uh, so they made a, 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 a way between the Jews uh, and the Samaritans, uh, and that's where it all came to pass. Uh, uh, that's He said, How is she said, How is it you a Jew? Uh, asked me a Samaritan to drink. Uh, uh, we have no dealings with one another. Uh, he said, If you knew uh, uh, the blessings of God uh, and if you knew who it was to ask you a drink, uh, 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 you would ask him to give you a drink. Uh, and he the drink, he would give you uh, his living water. I tell you, and she said, uh, uh, he said, Go uh, he said, Go to the house uh, and tell her husband, she said, I have uh, uh, no husband. He said, You said right. Uh, you got five husbands, uh, and the one that you got now ain't even your husband. Uh, in other words, uh, he said, she said, I, I, I perceive that you are a prophet. Uh, uh, she didn't realize that was living water uh, uh, that was she was talking to. Uh, uh, they had no dealings with her. Uh, but here this Samaritan uh, uh, come back and glorified God. You remember the, the story of the priest and the Levite and the Samaritan story is a good Samaritan. Who was it that bandaged him up? It was a good Samaritan one. It was a man from Samaria. Wasn't even supposed to be in contact with him. A lot of times we get caught up in our garb, I guess you could say, our, our persona, our, 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 our way with that people look at us, and we're too busy looking at the main thing. You know what the main thing is? Win souls to the Lord. A lot of times we put on our suits. A lot of times we put on our, our attire and we, uh, we, uh, we go to church, we're about our own business, and the world is going to hell. Right. Amen. Amen. Don't get quiet on me. I put myself in that cell. I put myself in that same thing. You know why? Somebody took time for me. Somebody prayed for me. Somebody spent time with me even though I was lost. Amen. And he's your pastor. <laughs> Somebody cared enough for me to share the gospel. Somebody spent hours upon hours upon hours uh, uh, praying for this old boy right here. Uh, you know what? I, I don't take that lightly. Uh, I think about that. Uh, I, I tell you, I, all, all I have uh, uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I mean, I'm thankful for an intercessor named Alan Freedy. Uh, I'm thankful for an intercessor uh, uh, named uh, R.G. Turner. Uh, I'm thankful for an intercessor uh, uh, named Buck Gaby. Uh, uh, those old boys, uh, they put up with me. They prayed for me. Uh, I worked with them side by side, uh, and they still love me. Uh, even though I was like that. You know why? Because they come from the same place. Uh, they were the same way. Uh, but I'm glad. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you think about uh, the, our life and everything. God likes to work yeah. when nothing else will. You know, ain't nothing can work except for Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. It don't matter the situation. You know what I think about that? I think about the curse that he had upon him. I think about that was a, a terminal situation. But you know what? We had a terminal situation on that statement. You know what that was? That was hell. We had a terminal. You know what? Because the Bible said the first man, Adam, uh, uh, and the second man, Adam, became a living soul. You know, you think about uh, his life and everything. You think about the second man, Adam. Uh, that was talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the only person that ever lived a perfect life uh, was him. Uh, the only one that ever could fulfill the law uh, to the end uh, was him. Moses couldn't do it. Uh, Moses uh, uh, reject, uh, re uh, rebelled against God when he smoked the rock twice. Uh, and when God told him to speak to it, uh, uh, when you think about his life, uh, uh, you think about Jesus, uh, uh, he was perfect uh, and he still is. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, be you perfect as I am perfect. That don't mean that we're not going to sin. That means be mature. Yeah. Amen. You know what that means? Paul said, when I was a child, I act like a child, I thought like a child, I spoke like a child. But I became a man. Yeah. I put away foolish things. Yeah, yeah. Childish things. You know, sometimes in life, I like to have fun. Sure. Amen. I, I, think, it, I think Christians ought to have fun. Yeah. Amen. I think you ought to be. I, I tell you, I've never been called a crazy preacher, but that's all right. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I like that. You know why? Because it's not offensive. Bless it, it's, we, we shouldn't be offended one another. Yeah. Amen. We should love one another yeah. and be happy. A lot of times we get caught up. I've never seen a time that we live in that everybody's feelings are hurt. Yeah. It's, it's, Amen. 
I tell you, if I would act like that, my dad would jerk off his belt and then he'd lay it too. Yep. I mean, uh, I, he said, get over your feelings. Amen. I'll give you something to feel. <laughs> That's just the way it was. Yep. You whip them today, they'll take you to court. <laughs> but that's all right. <clears throat> he did the right thing. Yeah. Amen. He let me he made me understand. I don't know why I'm chasing rabbits, but that's all right. <clears throat> he made me understand the, the real value of life. You know what the real value of life is? Be true. Be true. But you know who the truest person in life is? The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, I am the way. The truth and the life. Mm-hmm. No man comes to the Father but by me. I mean, you think about life. You think about our life. You only thought of that, he could fulfill what was missing. You know what? There was something missing in his life that day. And whenever he came to the Lord, he, he was going to thank you for, for touching him. But when he came to the Lord, God gave him what was missing. Yes. He said, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Amen. I think about Zacchaeus. In chapter 19, when Zacchaeus was there, uh, he no doubt had heard about the, uh, in chapter 18, of blind Bartimaeus uh, that came through the same city saying, uh, Jesus, thou son of David, uh, have mercy on me. Uh, and they said, Shh, be quiet, don't bother the master. And he said, uh, he hollered louder, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Uh, and he's called him and said, bring him to me. Uh, and when he touched him, uh, and he received his sight. Uh, uh, no doubt Zacchaeus uh, had heard about that. Uh, no doubt Zacchaeus had uh, uh, heard the people talking uh, Zacchaeus' problem uh, uh, wasn't the fact that he was short, uh, even though he was little of stature. Uh, and his problem wasn't the crowd, uh, even though there was a crowd around him, he couldn't get through. Uh, and his problem uh, uh, wasn't because of his job, uh, even though he was a chief of the publicans, uh, a tax collector, and he was rich. Uh, in other words, he cheated the people uh, and got rich out of that. Uh, and wasn't that his problem? Uh, uh, the problem was uh, uh, there was something missing in his life. Uh, and something that money couldn't buy, uh, something uh, uh, that his uh, uh, prestige couldn't buy, uh, something that, uh, that his position couldn't buy, uh, something that, uh, that his life couldn't buy, and, uh, and his problem was uh, uh, he was missing the Lord. Uh, I tell you, sometimes in life, uh, 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 we've got churches now, uh, and uh, uh, that's changed. Uh, they've taken out uh, uh, the Word of God. They added, uh, take out the red back hymnals. Uh, I tell you, give me the King James 1611. Uh, uh, give me the red back hymnals. Uh, uh, give me the old fashioned way. Uh, I tell you, I'd rather worship God uh, uh, with 10 people uh, uh, at a house of uh, uh, 3,000. Uh, that don't know God. Amen. Amen. So sometimes we get away from that. There's something missing. I tell you, I'm glad when I come into church this morning, I was praying, Lord, I need your help. And when the choir got up here and started singing, I tell you, I'm glad that the Holy Spirit, uh, yeah. uh, the brother was sitting right beside me, uh, he came in and started massaging my heart, uh, I tell you, and, and ministering my soul. Uh, I tell you, I started crying. I, I was sitting there saying, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Uh, because you know why? I don't ever want to stand. I'm the least uh, that should stand. Uh, I tell you, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, better people that can stand behind the sacred desk. Uh, and I'd sit there and listen to them preach. Uh, I tell you, I'll think about this. Uh, I don't ever want to try to stand. Uh, and try to preach his word without his presence. Uh, yeah. And because the Bible says God is a spirit, uh, and those that worship him uh, uh, must worship him yeah. in spirit and in truth. Uh, I tell you, I just sit down uh, and say, uh, Lord, have your way, uh, because I don't want to make a mess of things. Uh, I say this, uh, there was something missing in Zacchaeus' life. Uh, I tell you, I'm glad. Uh, he said, Zacchaeus, uh, uh, make haste and come down. Uh, and Zacchaeus, uh, I believe he skinned the bark off of the tree. Uh, I tell you, get down. Uh, he said, uh, for today I must abide at my house. Uh, and when he went home, uh, people said, he's going home to be with a man that's a sinner. Uh, uh, you notice what Zacchaeus said. Uh, he said, Lord, if I have uh, 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 defrauded anybody by uh, false uh, he said, oh, no, this is a paraphrase. Uh, if I've cheated anybody, uh, I'll restore him fourfold. Uh, that's what he was saying. Uh, he said, if I've taken a dollar off somebody, uh, I'll give him four. Uh, if I've taken a hundred dollars off somebody, uh, I'll give him four hundred. Uh, in other words, what he said, he said, Lord, I, I want to restore these people. Uh, I tell you, salvation comes to that man's house uh, because uh, there was something missing. And God took care of that. I tell you, we have churches. You know, I, I like what, what my preacher says. This is his analogy. Coming to church don't make us a Christian any more than sitting in the garage right. makes us an automobile. Right. Right. But you know what? I'm glad church. I had my aunt one time, I won't tell her. I tried to get her to come to church. She said, I can worship God just as good at home. And I, I said, well, I said, the Bible says, not forsaking the sin of self-care. And I said, we have a, 
I just don't like being around people. And I said, well, I tell you, heaven's going to be full of people. <laughs> we better get used to people. I tell you, uh, uh, people go to the malls, people go out to eat, but there's all kinds of people around there, uh, but they won't go to God's house. I tell you, uh, I, I knew that, that conversation was dead, so I just left it alone. Uh, I mean, I'll say this. Uh, uh, she, uh, uh, she understood what I was saying. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, we'll make all excuses in the world uh, uh, that why we don't want to go to God's house. Uh, uh, but I'll say this. Uh, I, I don't want to make no excuse. I want to be there. Uh, I'll tell you, last yeah. Sunday I couldn't go uh, uh, because my ankle was swollen up like that uh, uh, because that happened on a Saturday uh, and I had it elevated and, Epsom, uh, and I put it in Epsom salt and, and elevated. Uh, I couldn't even go to work Monday. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, uh, but I could put weight on it, but I thought, I'm not going to try it uh, uh, because I don't know if it's broken or not. Uh, and so I went to the doctor Monday morning, uh, and they told me, said, well, you, uh, you stretched the ligaments and the tendons in your foot. Uh, they said, it's going to take a long time to heal. Uh, I said, I'm just glad it ain't broke. I can still walk. Uh, I might hobble a little bit. Uh, I ain't going to run no marathon. I'm too fat for that anyway. <laughs> but I'll say this. Uh, uh, I'm going to have a lot do that. Sometimes things come. Uh, but I'm glad uh, that I had the Lord. Uh, I tell you, I was rolling around in that ice field of our life center, and the horses looked at me probably thought I was crazy. I was rolling around trying to get uh, my bearings to me. Uh, I was thinking to myself, I broke my ankle. Uh, and when I got up and stood, uh, I said, thank you, Lord. Uh, I didn't break it because I couldn't stand. I could stand on that. I could walk. Uh, and I'll say this, sometimes in life, uh, uh, we, uh, we forget about the things that's missing. Uh, I tell you, I'm glad the Lord ain't missing in my life. Uh, I tell you, I'm glad we come to God's house uh, and He's here with us. Uh, we come to God's house uh, and, and His blessing, uh, His Holy Spirit comes down uh, and just minister to heart. I'll say this, I've been here I'll have my three or four times preaching uh, and I've never come here uh, that I didn't feel God. Uh, I'm glad for that. Uh, I'm glad the Holy Spirit's here. Uh, I'm glad I came to God's house uh, and worship Him. Uh, I tell you, uh, when I was coming down the road, I was praying, Lord, uh, I just gave me something to say. Uh, I just used me God as a vessel. Uh, I tell you, I wasn't worried about whether God's going to be here or not uh, because I already knew He's already going to be here. Uh, but I'll say this, I'm glad He's with me this morning. Uh, I tell you, I'm glad I can feel it right now. Uh, I tell you, I'm glad uh, uh, for his presence uh, and his power. Uh, I tell you, when I think about this, uh, I just want to say, Lord, I just want to thank you uh, uh, for your house. Uh, I just want to thank you for your people. Uh, and no matter if I'm here or at my home church, uh, I can still worship God. Amen. Amen. He found what was missing. <laughs> Amen. Last but not least, I think about this. I'm thankful for his mercy. Yes. You think about what was taking place in chapter 18. I said, as we used to read them, when the publican went into the synagogue, some of the, and, the, and the Pharisee went in, the Pharisee was the religious leaders of that time. The ones that were supposed to be in the, the pinnacle, the ones that were supposed to be in, uh, the ones that, uh, uh, that were the, the most closest to God. And when the, when the Pharisee stood, he said, Lord, I thank you that I, I fast twice a week. I pay my tithe and all that. I'm thankful. I'm not like this publican standing over here. Uh, about what he was saying is, you know what? Look at his occupation. You know that. He's cheated somebody. Uh, but that little publican said, uh, uh, he smote himself on the breast. He said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, it was him that went home justified. Uh, uh, a lot of times we come to God uh, and tell how good we are. I tell you, I know it ain't nothing about me good. Uh, uh, Paul said, I don't know. Well, no good thing. I know if you see any good in me, don't praise me. Praise the Lord. Because I know me. I know my flesh. I know my life. You know who gives me the most trouble? That man I look at when I'm shaving or brushing my teeth. That's who gives me the most trouble. I'm glad for mercy. I'm glad that night I call out to God. I said, God, if I'm saved, assure me that I'm saved. I can still remember it. But if I ain't saved, God, I want to be saved. It looked like God was a million miles away. And I just laid down on the ground. I said to myself, I ain't getting up. I, if I have to stay here all night, I ain't getting up. And I said, I said, God, I, I want to be saved. And God come down. I'm glad for his mercy. I'll tell you, I don't have to go to hell this morning. I'll tell you, I'm glad that he changed my direction. I made a 180 in my life. I'm going towards heaven. I'll tell you, I like what Mace Jackson used to say. He said, I'm heaven bound with a hammer down. I'll tell you, I'm glad that's my goal. I'll tell you, one of these days we're going to say, I walk the street of gold. And I'm going to look at some of y'all. And I hope all of y'all, I tell you, we're going to lock arms and walk down the street of gold and tell how good that God is. And I said, uh, 
us. I tell you, we're going to be home. Uh, we'll go in peace. Uh, we'll get to see our grannies. Uh, and we'll get to see our brothers. Uh, and we'll get to see our old pastor we had uh, uh, for 30 years. Uh, uh, out in town of Seth, I'll get to see him. He went home to build the Lord in 2002. Uh, I'll get to see him again. Uh, and I'll say this. Uh, there's a lot of people that I want to see. Uh, but I want to see Jesus Christ. I want to I want to bow down at his feet. And see those nail pierced feet. The ones that shed his precious blood. He didn't spill it. He shed his precious blood for me and you. Yes, amen. That little public one got mercy that day. You think about the, the one that was there that had the, the leprosy. He got mercy that day. He said, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Zacchaeus got mercy that day. I know people says, I found the Lord. You know what? The Lord didn't. I didn't find the Lord. He found me. He wasn't lost. Amen. I was one that was lost. That's right. He found me. Amen. I'm glad he left the 99. I'm glad he yes. came and looked at that one. That one was straight on. The one that was on the wrong road. I'm glad he put me on the wrong road. I'm glad he bandaged my wounds and put me on his shoulder. Yes. And brought me back, put me in the fold. I tell you, I'm one of his little lambs. I might not be little as far as look at it physically. But I'm one of his little lambs. And if you're yes, saved this morning, Lord. you're one of his little lambs. Amen. I'm thankful for that. Amen. We stand to our feet. That's as far as I feel that to go. And I say this. When's the last time you thanked him? When's the last time you said, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul? Praise God. Thank you for my family. Amen. Amen. This morning, I don't know your heart. There may be somebody here this morning that don't know the Lord. I tell you, you can make this day. Think what, the 24? 24. Am I right? Yes. You can make November the 24th, 2019, the day that you come to the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, it'll be a day that you'll never forget. Yes. Maybe there's somebody here that you're walking far off. I don't know your heart. But I'll say this. Don't leave the same way yes. that you came in. Yes. The Lord loves you. He wants you to fix what's wrong in your life. Yes. Has the Lord been good to you? Yes, hallelujah. Do you love him this morning? Praise God. Yes, hallelujah. You've got a need. Would you come? Our precious Heavenly Father, Lord, as I come to you, Lord, I thank you. Lord, for loving us. I thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. I thank you, God, for everything you've ever done for my life, Lord, and for me. And I thank you for your Holy Spirit, God, Lord, as, as I try to preach this morning, Father. I know, God, I, I probably made a mess of things, but God, I'm thankful for your Holy Spirit, God, Lord. And Lord, you touch my soul, Father, Lord. I love you, Father, Lord. And I just pray, God, you'll take this message, Lord, and apply it to our lives, Lord. You said your word will return void, Father. And I pray, God, in the conference that's set up to me, Father, Lord, I pray your blessing on this church. Father, blessing on each family, Father, as this Thanksgiving's coming up, I pray, Father, you bless the pastor and his, his wife and his family, God. I pray, Lord, just help us, Father, Lord. God, always lift one another up, God. We all have needs, God. We all have lost loved ones. And I pray, God, keep us, Father, is my prayer, God. And, Lord, I pray be with us, Lord, and, and help us, Lord, not to ever forget, Lord, where we come from. But God, I always give you praise, God, and thank you. For your goodness, Lord, and where we're going in this life, Lord. I love you.